Welcome everybody, my name is Johnny Keck, I'm a representative from Ant Futures, and today we're going to take you to our next segment of our multicharts.net video tutorials. Today we're going to be covering how to use the actual trading dome, which is also known as the depth of market, price ladder, matrix, there are a lot of different terms for it. Uh, what we're going to show you today is a general overview in this particular video series that we're just going to show you what functions are available and how to pull up a dome, and then we'll move forward into the series in terms of how to use each one of those functions that I'm going to let you know what's available in terms of the actual trading dome. The first thing I want to let you know is there are two different display methods in terms of how to display your dome. You can display your dome in either a semi-static mode or dynamic mode, and I'll explain the differences between the two. Right now, currently on the screen is a semi-static dome. What that means basically is a semi-static dome means a dome window will automatically recenter once the current price, which is this yellow shaded price at the moment. If you see this price move outside of the display range, as I'm going to demonstrate here, you will see that the dome will automatically recenter, and the duration of the auto center is five seconds. All right, so you can see that if the market starts to move, what will happen is the dome will move, and if you notice, the dome is not recentering because the, the last trade price is still within the display range. So if I go in and move the, the actual dome so the last trade price is outside of the display range, you now see that auto center will kick in, and again, that duration is five seconds. So that's what we call a semi-static dome. For other users that prefer a dynamic dome, what you can do is you can right-click on the actual dome. You can select dynamic price scale, and watch what happens. You'll see that auto recentering has been suspended, and you can see no longer the depth of market is visible. However, what happens in a dynamic mode means a dome window will automatically recenter after each new tick price update is received. So uh, from my understanding, uh, this mode could be useful for scalping strategies. Uh, for the most part, from my experience in working with customers, however, it seems that the majority are using the semi-static dome. All right, so again, those are the two display modes. You can either right-click and go to dynamic price scale, or you can uncheck that option, and you will be automatically defaulted to a semi-static dome. As you can see, we have 10 levels of depth on the actual dome itself. And if you're wondering what depth is, this is the uh, values that you see interchanging in the buy and sell columns. Uh, right now, it's about uh, 7 o'clock here in California, so liquidity and volume is not as active as what you normally would see during the day. Uh, you can see those numbers are changing very, uh, very constantly, and uh, you, you very, very rarely you're going to see those numbers stay static unless you're trading a very illiquid market. This is the mini S&P, which is a very liquid market. And so you see there's 10 levels on each side here. So that's very nice. Most trading domes will give you about five levels, so you're looking at 10 levels deep here on the multicharts.net dome. You have one-click order entry, which makes it very easy for you to get in and out of trades. Uh, you can perform one-click trading with a mouse left-click or use your mouse right-click to choose a precise order. Here's an example if I left-click. Now, this is confirmation, so technically this is a two-click process, but if I do want to disable the confirmations, I can always check the do not ask me again and hit yes. So if I go ahead and do that, I'll hit yes. This is a disclaimer. And now I can just single-click to place a trade. So all I got to do is, now we'll get deeper into showing you how to place trades, but for now, I, I just want to give you an overview of what functions are available on the actual dome, as well as uh, connecting to different data feeds. If you look at the top left corner of the dome here, you see the drop-down menu. You have CQG data feed. You have LMAX for our Forex International customers. The local paper trader, so the paper trader broker profile is going to allow you to toggle back and forth between demo and live, uh, which is very, very nice. Uh, that function was not available prior to 9.1 release of multicharts.net, so we were able to get that implemented and added as an addition, which makes it very useful if you want to get get on the you know get back on the saddle and test some trading ideas out. You can toggle back and forth between live and demo. You also have rhythmic data feed and trading technologies TTNet. So you do have the luxury and the convenience of choosing which data feeds you'd like to use within multicharts, and you can manage that from the broker profile section within the platform. Uh, you can quickly drag and drop and modify orders. So, for example, here's a stop order. I can just highlight the stop order and just simply drag it right onto the dome and just drop it. And now you can see that order is working. Single click order modification, as you can see. And I'll cancel the order out by hitting that X. So, again, we're going to take a more in-depth view of how to execute trades uh, for a different segment of the series. Today is more just an overview of how to open up a dome and what functions are available. Now to open up a dome again, you want to go to File, here, New, and Dome Window. All right, and that will open up a dome. Now if you want to open up multiple domes, as you can see I have two domes open on the screen, I'm just going to rinse and repeat the same exact steps. So I'm just going to go to File, New, and then Dome Window. So there's no limitation to how many domes you can open. 
Of course, the only limitation would be your computer hardware. If your computer is not the fastest and you have 40 domes open, that, that can you know, possibly cause a little latency in how your computer is going to run. But for the most part, uh, multi-charge is not a memory hog, so it should not be too much of an issue. Now I'm going to go and close these domes out. And uh, you have entry and exit strategies at the bottom of the dome here. So this is very popular among our users. This gives you the ability to implement OCO strategies, whether they're entry orders or exit strategies. Uh, for those of you that have used different platforms, uh, you may be familiar with the term bracket orders or trailing stops or scaling out of different profit targets and using a master strategy, for example. So uh, also, the entry OCOs are very convenient as well. For example, if you look at this particular entry strategy called the breakout strategy, that gives you the ability to implement a buy stop and a sell stop as entry orders. And then let's say if you're anticipating a breakout, but you're not sure which way the market's going to break, then you can have an OCO implemented for both of those entry stop orders, which is very nice. And not only can you have an OCO implemented for those entry OCO orders, but you can also attach exit strategies to each one of those entry OCO orders as well. So essentially what you're doing is you're creating a multi-OCO strategy, whether it's for entry strategies or for exit strategies, which is something that's very nice that comes included with the platform. So we will also get very deep and in-depth in how to use those particular entry and exit strategies. Uh, but for now, we're going to just show you what functions are available. And then for the most part, uh, this is the general concept of the dome. There's a, a lot more other features here that we'll get we'll take a deeper look into, for example, the volume profile. Volume profile is very straightforward. It's just going to tell you how many contracts have traded at each price level. So you see at 2046, there's been about roughly 351 contracts. This little P&L column here, that stands for profit and loss. So what happens is when you get into a trade, I'll go ahead and demonstrate a quick trade here. All right, so you see now that uh, it's $12.50 for every tick on the mini S&P. So you can see that I'm currently long from 2046. That's break even. You can see that if I'm looking at that P&L column, I'm long. So if you see as the market goes up, you can see that it, it will display how much I'm making or losing. So this is pretty cool. This was added again on the recent 9.1 release, and this was a new addition. I'm going to go and close out the trade for now. And that's what that P&L column will do. So for now, this concludes this general overview of the dome. Let's take a deeper look and move forward and start getting into the meat and potatoes of the dome and showing you how to use each one of these functions. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you in the next uh, video.